All right, well, we're going to continue our journey. So we're on Sutra 215. So um, our guide, Swami Satchidananda, before I read the sutra, this is what he says about it. He says, here, Patanjali gives a very important sutra and a great truth in the spiritual field. If we could only contemplate this for at least a little while daily, our lives would be completely transformed. This is the sutra, <laughs> not to build it up too much. <laughs> <laughs> he says to one of discrimination everything is painful indeed due to its consequences the anxiety and fear over losing what is gained the resulting impressions left in the mind to create renewed cravings and the constant conflict among the three gunas which control the mind <laughs> yep. not very uplifting to one of discrimination everything is painful indeed because of the consequences of anxiety over losing what we have <clears throat> the impressions left that create new cravings and then this constant contact conflict among the three gunas so as a reminder in book one we learned that the three gunas are rajas, which is excessive energy, sattva, which is sort of the middle place of, I'll just call it the middle place, and then tamas, which is a kind of a depressed energy or a slowness or a stuckness. So what he's saying is that we're like constantly bouncing back and forth between like too much, too little, and not kind of landing in just right in the middle. It's kind of a little Goldilocks thing. Too much, too little. How do we find the sweet spot? Um, one of the things that, just the bad news for you guys, he starts with saying to one of discrimination. So for those who are discriminating, we see this reality. And this is kind of the, the path. If we're interested in the true nature of things and we start to go down this path of like what's real, what's not real, when we first start to wake up, um, well, actually, I think when, when we first start to wake up, we're like, oh, wow, like I know everything. <laughs> we're like, oh, I'm figuring this all out. And then we start to wake up a little bit more and we're like, oh my gosh, I know nothing. <laughs> and then along the path, there's a lot of bouncing back and forth. Um, and you can't not know <laughs> once you've started down the path, right? You can't just say, I don't really want to accept what I'm starting to understand about the nature of reality. Um, so this is a difficult path, I guess, is um, part of what I'm sharing in, in solidarity with you. I'm on this path with you and I'm having my own difficulties with some of the nature of reality. <laughs> I mean, and as I read this chapter, I was like, oh, yep, yeah, that, yep, that. So um, imagine you have a high position appreciated by people. Everything says you're in a great person, and then you love it, and then it goes away. <laughs> I feel a little bit of that around the yoga studio. I'm like, yay, I built this great thing. And then it's like, oh, wow, well, you're going to have to give that up and move on to something new. Or maybe you accumulate money and then it goes away, or a nice house on Dutch Island, <laughs> or BMW. <laughs> it's just like all the things that we get and then we're like, oh yeah, not that. Um, 
So, um, I bring this up for our own, each and one of us, introspection around our attachment to things, to ideas, and then the pain that comes from that when it's not as it was. Right, so it's it's the it's not like it used to be feeling. And that's not to say that the current reality is better or worse, it's just not the same as it was. And that's um that's the thing I have to keep coming back to is well it's not the same as it was, but there's something here that's worth something. Right, each of us is aging. <laughs> We're all experiencing the, well, it's not like it used to be. <laughs> um, but that doesn't mean it's good or bad. It just, we're clinging. And we're swinging between like too much and not enough. And the thing is when we're really, really in it, the tools are a little bit useless. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday I was having a really bad day um, and it's because of rajas like I had so many events this week and get up early stay out late trying to do everything and then by Saturday I was like okay today I want to go to the farmers market and I couldn't I want to go to beer and yoga. I want to see the humans. And I couldn't. I just got up, made my coffee, did a couple things. And then I went back to bed. And then there was this like voice in my head that's like, no, you need to be doing things. This is your day to do stuff. I was like, no, I can't. <laughs> And then I got in a fight with my husband because I was feeling crappy about myself. And then I went to go talk to him. Finally, I was like, okay, I just like, I need to talk about this. And then he started talking all yoga speak to me. <laughs> oh, that made me really mad. <laughs> oh, so anyways, I don't have any answers. I just have, um, yeah, when we start to wake up, it's painful because we're not there. And then we look at ourselves and we're like, but we're not there. <laughs> so I, I, I don't really have anything to offer in terms of teaching today other than like, I'm right here with you. You know, I'm on the path. I'm trying to be with what's here and it's not easy. So I'm going to invite us to meditate. I did meditate yesterday. <laughs> it looked like laying down in my bed with my earbuds in, listening to Insight Timer. I was like, okay, I just like, I need something. Um, Jeff came in and I was laying in my bed with my earbuds and he's like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm meditating. <laughs> I said with force. <laughs> So anyways, let's meditate, whatever that looks like today. We just like start again, this practice of start again. So, um, somewhere the gunas of effort or ease or nothing. So we'll Start just by landing. Our physical body is nice and tangible. So feel into your feet, your seat.
Heal into what is most tangible, what seems most real. Notice what your breath is doing right now. Notice if there's a little catch in it or some ease. any gripping in your body. Or maybe there's a, a dullness that needs to wake up just a little bit. Notice your hands, just as the observer. What's the energy that you're holding in your hands? practice of what's here. And doing our best not to judge it, just to be like, oh, hmm, this is here. there's an unsteadiness in your energy. Use the breath and your tools to just cultivate some stability. There's some dullness, use your breath to bring in some energy. gentle.
what else is here for you right now? Give yourself permission to go there. Swami Sachidananda calls it involution. Going inward. Picture in your mind's eye the being or the place that makes you feel most safe. And be with that sense of nurturing. Notice if there's any sense of a spirit, something more immaterial. Uh, a feeling from the inside that's nurturing.
perhaps it's not inner or outer. Just a, a piece all around. like that moment in the day at dawn when the birds are chirping and the light is special and everything is okay we just need to open the door and walk outside. Take a breath. Do that again when a nice big clearing. And when you're ready, open your eyes. some smiles, some just mm, comments, insights, questions. Yes, Jessica. I just wanted to say uh, how incredibly um, useful I find it to have the uh, practice of gratitude. Sorry about my dog. Huh. Well, uh, during the times um, that you you feel that you have those lows or you have to give up something, you know, to always look back and find something to be grateful for. And also, I find that it doesn't matter sometimes how broken you might seem like in your physical or your your stature or whatever it might be because what really is important is your spirit you can still shine through no matter how broken you might seem like a good example is like people like I take inspiration from people like Stephen Hawking who's extremely like disabled but brilliant mind you can shine through in your spirit 
you know, and find ways that even though you're broken in certain ways, to still like muster up that resilience and still find ways to be sparkly, you know, because what else is left, you know, if you're not going to be like that, you know, your other option is to let life beat you down, you know? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. And I think, you know, Yes, you've been beat down a couple times. <laughs> we all have. Yeah, we all have. Well, I love you guys. Marsha, did you, you. want to share something? Well, I just want to say thank you for speaking your truth. Um, I've just got a lot going on myself with what's going on in the world. Um, I'm also got a big birthday coming up and um, I've got Passover Seder tonight with lots of people and um, your words were just very comforting this morning um, and something that I read and, and Jessica just touched upon it with the gratitude in this meditation this morning I'm outside on my porch and the birds just life is so beautiful and um Something that I read when you, you know, you have to do something, just flip it. Like I get to do it. So all of a sudden that just came into my head. You know, I get to have this Seda, host this Seda tonight with friends and family. Um, I get to experience an 80th birthday. You know, it's just, just the mindset of changing it. So thank you for speaking your truth because it's helped me and I'm sure helped everybody else. 